Hey, welcome to module two, part two. And we're doing some more problem solving. We're building on Mrs. Glaze's problem solving activity she did with you in the previous part. But this time we're applying this particularly to linear equations. So we're gonna be using tables, graphs, equations, and diagrams. So let's review. When you approach a problem solving situation, you're gonna ask yourselves, you know, what are we finding? You're going to think about ways you can represent it with a picture, for example. You'll look for information that you know and looking for what you don't know. And we're going to ask ourselves, what tools do I have? And so I'm going to focus on the tools part a little bit more. So, for example, one tool we would have would be a graph. Those are very helpful. You also have equations. And then you have tables and diagrams. So with that in mind, let's use some of these tools strategically to, to do some problem solving. So in example one, I'm going to take a look at tables and graphs. And here's the problem. To rent a mid-sized car, there's a $55 administrative fee plus a rental cost of $35 per day. Now Gary has $390 set aside for the rental car. How long can he rent the car? Well, one approach would be just to start with your $55 fee and build on that. So on day zero, I'm going to call that 55. You don't get to even have the car for a day unless you pay that $55. But then if you want to keep it for a day, you're going to pay $90 because it's $35 more than the 50 55, sorry. And so then we'll just keep adding $35 for each day. And we're just looking for the part where we hit 390. So it looks like we actually don't have an even number of days. We have nine days for 370 and then 10 days is 405. So in reality, Gary would get to keep the car for nine days and he has a little bit of change. Now, if by chance there was this prorated thing going on where he could keep the car for a little bit more than nine days, then it would be helpful to pull out a graph and be a little bit more accurate. So here's an example of making a graph with a Desmos activity or a Desmos calculator. And in this case, you know, I took that 55 and I took that 90 and I drew a line through it. And then I also drew a line at y equals 390. And I was just looking for where they intersect. And they intersect right here at this point, 9.571 and 390. So this number here, the 390, that is our y value. Or in other words, that's our money. And this x value, 9.571, that's the days. So in this case, he would get to keep it for about 9.6 days. And that's an example of how you could use a table and a graph. Now let's do an example where we're working with equations and diagrams. And this diagram is going to motivate the equation. So here we've got two angles that are supplementary. And one angle is six more degrees than twice the other angle. We want to find the measure of the two angles. So it would help if I got a visual in mind of what two supplementary angles would look like. Now remember, supplementary angles mean they add to 180 degrees. So I'm going to call the one known angle X, and the other one is 6 degrees more than twice that. So I'll call the other one 2X plus 6. And now if I want to find those then I'm going to use my equation because I know that if I add those together they're going to sum to 180 degrees. Now I'll solve for this equation, solve for x. Notice how I'm going to show each of my steps in here. And you might be thinking, well, I don't need to show steps. These are easy. I can do them in my head. Yes, that's true. And then when you make a mistake, you don't know where you made it because you don't have any trail of evidence on what you've been doing. So now I'll divide both sides by 3. And I have x equals 58. 
So I found, by finding x, I found the measure of one angle. That's 58 degrees. Now let's go ahead and find the other one. So to find the other one, that's going to be twice the measure of angle 58 plus 6 more. So I know that 2 times 58 is going to be 116 plus 6 more is going to equal 122. Now it's always good practice when you finish a math problem to check your work and see if what you did is right. So we can check this to see if they're supplementary. So 122 degrees, add that to 58 degrees, and 8 plus 2 is 10, and yes, sure enough, we have supplementary angles. They add to 180 degrees. Now let's do our example 3. And in this case, we're going to be looking at tables and diagrams together, and you'll see why I'm, I'm choosing to use both of those. So Rena wants to enclose a rectangular plot with 20 feet of fencing. What is the largest area she can enclose? Well, the first thing I would do is I draw a diagram, and I did that before we built this, before we filmed this video, because I knew this was coming. So here's my diagram. And I've got a length and I've got a width. So why don't I call this my length right here? And I'll call this my width. And at this moment, I'm just going to do some, some guessing and some looking at scenarios and seeing what seems to make sense. So let's just suppose that we started off with a length of one. She had a really long and narrow enclosed area. Now, if this length is one, then this length would also be one, and that would leave 18 feet of fence left. And so that 18 fit, feet, sorry, split between these two sides would be nine each. So the width would be nine. Now let's try another scenario. And I notice I haven't filled out the area yet. I can do that in a second. I just want to see what different scenarios I have. So now let's suppose that we made the length two feet. And if I made the length two feet, then that would take off four feet in total. That would leave 16 feet left to split between these two sides. So that would make eight feet per side. Now, you're going to notice a pattern here, which means that I can stop doing these long, longer calculations. I'll just start filling in the chart. So it looks like as I go up by one in the left column, I'm going down by one in the right column. So I'll just keep numbering this. Three, four, five, six, seven, and I'll come down this direction. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And it looks like I actually am going to make more work for myself if I fill out the whole chart. Do you notice how I have this? 7 and 3 entry here, and it's the same area as this 3 and 7 entry right here. So that just tells me that I'm, I'm going to start getting some duplicates on my answers. Now let's fill in the area. 1 times 9 is 9. 2 times 8 is 16. I'll keep going. 3 times 7 is 21. 4 times 6. 24, 5 times 5 is 25, and 6 times 4 is 24 again, and I don't really need to keep going. Matter of fact, I noticed just now that I have this 6 and 4 
is a duplicate also. So what do you notice about our areas? Well, we notice that they're going up and then they're starting to go down again. So in this case, I feel comfortable saying that the largest area that she can enclose is going to be 20 square or 25 square feet. And that's going to happen when we have a length of five and a width of five. So that concludes our video on problem solving. And this isn't meant to be exhaustive by any means. There are a lot of different problems that you're going to see mathematically. And sometimes we'll approach them with a table and a diagram, for example, and realize that that just didn't work. And so we go and we try to graph it. These are just tools that we will use. And you don't know if your tool works or not until you try it. And so I'm going to encourage you that as you work through some of these problem solving activities that we've got for you, just try some of these. And if it doesn't work, then it's time well spent because you now know what doesn't work. And you can start looking for what does. Have a great day.